I now look to the right honourable Lord Marland uh, to defend himself, I think, and, and to continue the case of the opposition. Oh, God, I never thought I'd be referred to as an outdated institution. That was marvellous. Thank you so much. The compliments are flying. I've had worse compliments than that, I tell you, but I'm not going to go into them now. <laughs> well, look, so, such a privilege to be with you all today. Um, and uh, to be... It's exciting for me. I'm sort of almost nervous listening to these speeches that I've got to come up with something that's even better than what I've just heard. And so forgive me if I don't, but try and be charitable at the end of it all. Uh, I, I have to say, I was slightly disappointed with the last speech, <laughs> uh, particularly a, 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 with a young, vibrant, forward-looking audience like you. We want to talk about the future, not the past. We don't want to bother with ancient history. We can read it all in our books, and of course we know it. We must learn from history, but we have to look at the future, and that is uh, what is the appealing thing about the Commonwealth. Of course... Almost every day I wake up thinking, um, uh, should it have no future? Because I have the full frustrations of the Commonwealth as chairman of the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council, Commonwealth Business Council as well. I ask myself every day whether we should have some future. We have, at times, poor leadership. We, have, we are grossly underfunded. Uh, there is often lack of unity. Uh, and many times the institutions that are associated with the Commonwealth do not deliver. And uh, if you judge an institution on delivery, then that is a very key point. And uh, if it is to have a future, which I believe it is, it's got to have bravery in its belief and it's got to have commitment to that cooperation. So if you in this room believe in globalisation... If you believe in international cooperation, if you believe that peace can be formed and, and resolutions can be formed by cooperation, if you, feed, if you believe that trade leads to prosperity and lifting people out of poverty, if you believe that democracy and the alignment of democratic nations in, uh, to take on the conquering uh, dictatorships that exist in the world uh, and that these institutions of democracy can with it bring equality and diversity and all the things that we hope for in a democratic existence. If you believe that soft power can bring untold benefits to nations, particularly the poorer nations throughout the world, then you have in the end to believe in an institution like the Commonwealth one of the two institutions that brings together major nations throughout the world, 54 of them in our case, the United Nations, of course, is the entire world. But you have to believe in those organisations that bring together people and countries to aspire to the future. And if you also believe that the challenges of the world that face you as a generation are not so much the old farts like me who are crusty old people in the House of Lords. But if you believe that the futures for uh, generations are climate change, post-COVID financial reconstruction, youth unemployment, and by the way, 60% of all Commonwealth citizens are under 30, a massive figure. So youth unemployment is going to be a huge challenge. Then you again have to believe in international cooperation to solve these problems. And I put it to you, of course, that the Commonwealth is one of those organisations that's going to do it. And why is it so well placed? Well, it's 54 countries. They all speak the same language. That's the membership ticket for the Commonwealth. You have to speak English as your main language or of your main two languages. It's a third of the world's population, as I referred earlier, 60% of the next generation live in the Commonwealth. It is underpinned by a fundamental rule of law. Admittedly, it's the British rule of law, which you may feel wrong. And admittedly, not every country has the same adaptation of the rule of law that we may wish or that we have in our own country. That has had a shared education system. 
uh, again, the British education system, right or wrong, but we all seem to be pretty well educated in this country and has been adopted by nations across the world. And that it is 19% easier to do trade intra-commonwealth than extra-commonwealth. And that is a fundamental benefit. And I put it to you also that you may not know about the Commonwealth a lot, but it is a very trusted institution. A trusted brand name might be the watchword of the future. It has, as the previous speaker referenced, the Commonwealth Games. This is the largest investment Birmingham has had in its, in its city's history about to happen this year, and it is the second biggest sporting, multi-sporting event in the world, the Commonwealth Games. The Commonwealth Association of Universities, many of you here will have benefited from that organization, the cross-pollinization the Commonwealth universities have across the world. Commonwealth local government, bringing together local government practices throughout the Commonwealth so that people can adopt the right ways to manage local governments. Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, putting the shoulders to the wheel of democracy and uh, the management of a parliamentary institution. And then finally, my own institution, which brings together the trade and investment across uh, the world. And I say immodestly, there are very few uh, events other than our Commonwealth Business Forum, which brings together 50 heads of state billionaires, multi-billionaires, Lord Mayors of, of cities, trade ministers, 800 business people from 90 different countries, and the royal family, who never forget, are one of Britain's strongest assets, all under one roof. And our last virtual conference, I might just add, had 250,000 people attending a business forum. This is an unheard of figure. So it shows you that the Commonwealth is alive and well and is a vibrant organization of which you as the next generation can build on. Don't be sidetracked by this empire nonsense. The Commonwealth has gone way beyond the, the former British Empire. It is no longer in existence. Don't be sidetracked by this idea of colonialization or, co or British colonialization. This is a thing of the past. No one's interested in it. But beware of being modern-day colonialists where you preach to other democratically elected countries how they should and shouldn't run their country. That is the watchword for new Commonwealth people. It is a global experience, and all of you in this room have the great ability to enjoy it. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you.